We have seen that the height of a binary search tree is critical to its performance. The running time of all the operations of insert, contains, and remove are proportional to the height of the tree. We have also seen that the height of a binary search tree can be very large. For example, when n elements are inserted into the tree that are already in, already in sorted order, the height of the tree becomes n minus 1, and this essentially degrades the BST into a linked list. In this segment, we look at a way to actively balance a binary search tree as elements are inserted and removed so that the height of the tree does not grow too large and remains proportional to the logarithm of the number of elements in the tree. We know that a binary tree with n elements is always going to have height at least log n. We need log n levels in a binary tree just to store n elements. We are now going to see how to actively balance the tree so that its height is always proportional to log n. If we can do this, then the running time of all our operations becomes order log n, which is pretty fast. There are sev several different ways to maintain a balanced binary search tree, which are all fairly similar. The particular way that we will talk about is by what's called an AVL tree. Another popular method is what's called a red-black tree. In C++, the standard library implementations of set and map are typically done via red-black trees. AVL trees are named after their two inventors, Adelson, Velsky, and Landis. In an AVL tree, we keep track of the height of each node. Remember that the height of a node is the length, that is the number of edges, of a longest path from that node to a leaf. To avoid a special case, it is useful to think of a null pointer as pointing to a node of height minus one. So here, um, we think of all these null pointers as pointing to nodes of height minus one. Then we can compute the heights of nodes from the ground up. We know that leaves have height zero. We can then recursively define the height of a node to be one plus the maximum height of its children. You see that this formula also works for leaves. A leaf has two null pointers coming out of it, so its height is one plus the maximum of minus one and minus one, or zero. Now we can compute the next level of heights. Okay, so all these nodes have height one, and we have a, one node at height two there. This node has height three because its left child has height one and its right child has height two. And finally, the root has height four, which is one plus the maximum of the height of its left child, which is one, and the height of its right child, which is three. AVL trees maintain a very strict balance property. For every node, they mandate that the height of that node's left and right child differs by at most one. Let us call the balance factor of a node to be the height of its right subtree minus the height of its left subtree. It doesn't matter if you use right minus left or left minus right here, but we will take the convention of the that the balance factor is the height of the right subtree minus the height of the left subtree. We say that a node has the AVL property if its balance factor is either minus one, zero, or one. And in an AVL tree, every node must have the AVL property. Here's the example tree we had before. On the left, the heights of nodes are written in pink. On the right, the balance factor of nodes is written in orange. For example, look at the node with key 13. The height of its right child is zero, its right child is a leaf, and the height of its left child is one. Therefore, the balance factor of the node with key 13 is zero minus one or minus one. Now, is this tree an AVL tree? No, it's not, right? because the balance factor of the root is two. The right child of the root has height three, while the left child only has height one. 
So this would not be an AVL tree. Now let's see what the AVL property, the fact that every node has balance factor either minus one, zero, or one, implies for the height of the tree. What we will see is that in an AVL tree with n nodes, the height is always at most two times log n. Now we see why the AVL property is so good. It ensures that the height of the tree is close to as small as possible. To see why the AVL property implies this, we ask ourselves the following question. Suppose that we have an AVL tree with n nodes. What is the maximum possible height? We want to show that this maximum possible height is at most two times log n. It turns out to be easier to think about this question in a slightly different but equivalent way. Instead of fixing the number of nodes, let's fix the height of an AVL tree to be h. Now the question becomes, what is the minimum number of nodes that an AVL tree of height h can have? Think about these two formulations of the question for a minute to convince yourself that they are equivalent. Let's look at some examples to get a feeling for this question. Let t of h be the minimum number of nodes in an AVL tree of height h. t of 0 is just 1. For t of 1, we have to have at least two nodes to get a tree of height 1 because we need to have an edge. For t of 2, we need to have a tree of height 2. Our first thought might be just to add another node to our tree like this. So now we have a tree of height 2. But there's a problem with this example. This is not an AVL tree, right? Because the height of the left child of the root is minus 1, right? The, the root does not have a left child. But the height of its right child is 1. So the balance factor is 2, which is not allowed in an AVL tree. So to make this an AVL tree, we have to also give the root a left child. Giving the root a left child, we arrive at this tree in the picture for t of 2. And we see that t of 2 is equal to 4. Let me first show the, the picture of an AVL tree of height 3 with the minimum, minimum number of nodes. And then let's discuss how to arrive at this. So you see that the left subtree here is exactly our example flipped of a minimum tree of height 1, minimum AVL tree of height 1. And the right subtree here is exactly the example that we just saw of a minimum of an AVL tree of height 2 with the minimum number of nodes. So we start to see a recursive pattern here. We want to design an AVL tree of height h with the minimum number of nodes. In order to have height h, one child of the root has to have height h minus 1. So in this picture, we want to design an AVL tree of height 3 so one of the children of the root has to have height 2. In, that case, in this case, it's the right child. In order to have the minimum number of nodes, we want the other child to have as small a height as possible. But because of the AVL property, the height of the other child has to be at least h minus 2, right? Because the difference in height between the right child and the left child can be in, at most 1 in magnitude. So in this case, uh, when we're looking at t of 3, the left child here has to have height at least 1. So we have a tree where one child, it, it doesn't matter which one, but in these examples we're taking the right child, has height h minus 1, and the left child has height h minus 2. Both the left and right subtrees have to again be AVL trees, and we want them to have as few nodes as possible so that our tree overall has as few nodes as possible. 
So we see that the left and right subtrees should actually be the trees realizing the values of t of h minus 1 and t of h minus 2. And that's exactly what we have in this example. The right subtree is uh, the example that we had realizing t of 2, and the left subtree is, well, up to this, up to this flipping, the example of the tree that we had realizing t of 1. This reasoning directly gives us a recursive formula for t of h. Since the tree has height h, one of the children of the root, let's say this one, has to have height h minus 1. As we want the tree overall to have as few nodes as possible, we want the height of the other child to be as small as possible. But because of the AVL property, the height has to be at least h minus 2. So therefore, we have a tree where the one child of the root has height h minus 2, and the other child of the root has height h minus 1. Now, each subtree here has to again have the AVL property, and we want the tree overall to have as few nodes as possible. So we want this tree to be an AVL tree of height h minus 1 with as few nodes as possible. Therefore, this tree is going to have t of h minus 1 many nodes. Similarly, this tree here, in order to make the number of nodes as small as possible, is going to have t of h minus 2 many nodes. Therefore, we find that t of h is 1, that accounts for the root here, plus t of h minus 1, plus t of h minus 2. So we have this recursive formula for t of h. And we see that this formula is actually very similar to the recursive formula defining the Fibonacci sequence. Here is a simple way to lower bound t of h. t of h is an increasing function of h. The greater the height, the more nodes the tree must have. So we know that t of h minus 1 is bigger than t of h minus 2. Therefore, t of h is at least twice t of h minus 2, where we're just throwing away the plus 1 term. This tells us that every time we increase the height by 2, we have to double the number of nodes in the tree. So since we know that t of 0 is 1, that means that t of 2 is at least 2, and t of 4 is at least 4. And as we keep going, we see that t of h has to be at least 2 to the power h divided by 2. This means that if we have an AVL tree with n nodes and height h, then n, of course, is at least the minimum number of nodes in an AVL tree of height h. So we know that n is at least t of h. And we have just argued that t of h is at least 2 to the power h divided by 2. Taking the logarithm of both sides, this means that h is at most 2 times log n. So this shows that an AVL tree with n nodes has height at most 2 times log n. We saw that the recurrence for t of h is very similar to that of the Fibonacci numbers. If we let f of h be the hth Fibonacci number, we can actually express t of h in terms of f of h. I won't go through the details here, but you can actually show that t of h is exactly f of h plus 3 minus 1. So it's the h plus third Fibonacci number minus 1. Using the closed form expression for the Fibonacci numbers, you can use this to show a slightly better upper bound on the height of an AVL tree of roughly 1.44 times log n, rather than the bound of 2 times log n that we derived.